Hello again, I am Jim Bob, and welcome back to F1 Manager 23 Hardcore Series tonight, round uh, 10. Yes, <laughs> round 10 of season 5. We are taking the fight to Red Bull in their own backyard. We are heading to the Red Bull ring, the Austrian Grand Prix. So, of all the races that would be nice to win this year, this is probably right up there with the other ones. You know, right up there with you know, Monaco. That was uh, that was one I really wanted to win. Uh, really want to win Silverstone because it's the British Grand Prix. You know, it's my home track. Really want to win this one because it's Red Bull's home track. And I really want to beat them. On their own home ground give them a bit of a backyard beat down so to speak so have we got the pace to do that theoretically yes we shall see uh weather wise tonight uh we have got a little bit of rain sprinkled in on the friday which could well affect qualifying but the sprint and the race will both be under clear skies so ERS will be available. Fingers crossed. You know, our pace will hold up. We uh, were just a tiny bit off the pace at times last night in the rain at Montreal. Uh, and Mick made a couple of mistakes. We still got the win with, uh, with Oscar. Charles Leclerc came in second. Mick, unfortunately, couldn't get, uh, couldn't get back up to, uh, to challenge in time. Uh, to try and take second back but we will have our DRS available tonight it's a pretty potent weapon and about half of the track <laughs> is, is just DRS zones here so uh, yeah sectors 1 and 2 could be very good for us here. very good indeed let's uh, set some targets for tonight because I did forget last night thank you for the reminder Victor <laughs> Uh, let's uh, first of all check our car there you can see uh, we have actually been caught a little bit in the low and medium speed downforce we were first last night uh, now with third so someone has found an improvement wonder who that was oh, I was Red Bull Red Bull have found a big downforce improvement uh, yeah they definitely brought some upgrades to their car they've closed the gap in terms of speed acceleration is about the same as it was DRS is about the same as it was but yeah they're taking a big step forward downforce wise they now beat us in the low and medium speed and they've closed up a fair bit in the high speed as well I think they've even overtaken us in the dirty air slightly as well compared to last night uh, so Rebel looking a bit more potent here tonight uh, that makes things a bit more interesting. Uh, who else do we want to take a look at? A quick look at Alpine. Alpine look to have a decently balanced car. They're very good in the dirty air, which will definitely help them around this circuit. Keep them nice and close through the second half of Sector 2 and into sector three and let's take a look at Aston could be a rough race for Aston they are lacking some speed especially in the top speed and their low speed performance is not good either which will definitely hurt them in a couple of places around the track uh, who else was quick last night Not a bad looking car for Williams. Very quick in a straight line. Decent acceleration. Good DRS. Uh, they are lacking a little in the downforce stakes. But they could definitely be a threat. So, targets then. 
Uh, qualifying position, the incentive is two in the top four. Should hopefully be able to get that. This is a track where we will be doing slipstream qualifying. Uh, let's go with uh, both cars in Q3 and both cars in Q2. Uh, fastest lap is the incentive. Should hopefully get that. Finish position, two in the top four. Yes, we will go for that. I think Red Bull are the only team that's really going to challenge us pace-wise here tonight. Uh, and then finish position streak. Uh, we've got a new one to start tonight. One in the top six for two races. And then uh, we're two or five done in the quali streak, which is two in the top eight for five races. Uh, tonight will be race number three. So there we go. We have set some targets for tonight. And let's head to Austria the Red Bull Grand Prix. Welcome along to the spectacular setting of Austria. The hills are alive with the roar of F1 cars as we arrive in Spielberg's stunning natural surroundings. Fans have already filled the nearby campsites and it's going to be a busy weekend here at the Red Bull Ring. The Red Bull Ring is one hungry beast of a power track. Drivers face a steep climb up to turn three and a fast ride downhill through wide corners and straights thereafter. There's plenty of opportunity to overtake here, especially with the help of three DRS zones. It's not a usual F1 weekend though, with qualifying brought forward to make way for an all-out sprint race, which will decide the grid for the Grand Prix. Sit tight then for the rest of the action. So last year in the Battle of the Bulls, we uh, we tried and we failed. Uh, Max, unfortunately, just kind of had more pace than us in long run pace and just managed to keep just stretching away from us. Uh, tonight will be a different uh, kettle of fish altogether. Max is going to be the weaker of the two Bulls tonight. It's going to be Charles Leclerc that's going to be the challenge. And uh, I think it again will be a three-way fight for the win between... Uh, Charles Leclerc and our two drivers. We do have to get the car prepped nice and quickly tonight. It is a sprint weekend, so everything's got to be nailed as quickly as we can. Uh, let's go with medium tyres in this session. Uh, so for the Red Bull Ring, we want to go for 23 laps of fuel. And we'll start with a setup for Mick. Let's go with a 5, a 13, a 1, 9, a 3.2, and a 0.85. Uh, we'll change out those parts as well. Go. Right, on to Oscar's car. Again, we're going to go with the medium tyres. Uh, 23 laps of fuel. Swap out those parts. what I want to do setup wise for Oscar we'll go slightly different we'll go four point five thirteen point five to eight a three and a point three there we go Let's see if either of those setups works. How you doing, Baron? How you doing, Mr. Water? Uh, how you doing, uh, Raven? Is that Raven or Rayburn? I've got my glasses on. Rayburn. Hello. Good to see you. Uh, let's uh, head to practice.
How's the radio on track? Copy. Yep, all good. Quick radio check for me. Yep, radio check. Yep, copy, same. Watch those curbs. Copy. see what kind of pace we've got tonight hopefully we can get the setup nailed very quickly tonight I'd like to approach this weekend with as much confidence as we possibly can get if we could even max out with a hundred percent that would be fantastic rain still coming oh, I didn't even think to check the weather uh, yeah it's gonna get a little bit wet isn't it that could make things uh, a little tricky. We are due to get our feedback very soon. There we go. Feedback from Oscar. 96. That's pretty good. We'll leave him out there for a bit, then finish his run before we bring him in. How's the balance? And 92 for Mick. Okay, any comments on balance? The car was great. Yeah, we'll leave Mick out as well. We'll let them finish their runs. I think 92% is a uh, strong baseline. We'll let them get some more time on track before we bring them in. A bit of rain on the track. May as well call him in now. Oops. It's very slippery. Copy. Not going to put them on inters when we send them back out. We're going to leave them on these uh, medium tyres. Because hopefully most of that rain will have finished by the time well actually no we won't but we won't have to wait too long on these tires before it dries up again right uh, so we are quite a way off on the braking stability that is the toe so i need a, a lower toe setup but everything else is about right so Looking at my book of setups, I don't have anything that is close. At all. Try a 5.5. It's 
3.05 and a 0.9. Maybe just pull it back a touch like that. I'm going to go with that. That keeps the front wing angle back where it needs to be. Shouldn't affect the rear wing angle too much. Traction looks pretty good. And then we can try and fine tune it from there at the end of this run. Evening Army. Um, yeah, we're actually pretty good at <laughs> getting 100% on our drivers. At least on a normal race weekend, it's a bit trickier on a sprint because we only have that one session to nail it, but... Yeah. Pretty good track record. changes do I need to make it's just the front wing so I'm gonna go with a five on the front wing just gonna correct that back down a touch like that and let's see if that does it more fuel in the car as well. drivers back out changes made let's see if they work by that about 10-15 uh, minutes How did the Canada go last night? Uh, pretty well. Um, Rain made things a little tricky. Mick made a couple of mistakes, but uh, Oscar was able to win ahead of Charles Leclerc with uh, Mick in third. Max had a terrible qualifying. Qualified 14th. Got himself up to 11th after the rain uh, started. And then uh, with a retirement in front of him and a, uh, a good overtaking here and there, he managed to get himself up to 7th, I think, in the end and salvage some points. But we have extended our lead in both championships. And uh, a win here tonight would go a long way to... Uh, Hopefully breaking their spirit a little bit, although they have brought an upgrade to the car tonight. And they are looking a little bit more potent on paper.
close. Close, 97%. And 97% again, very close. All right, well, they're both in the optimal window. We'll let them uh, finish out the session on the track and we'll see if it's an easy adjustment to make in uh, back in the garage at the end of the session, uh, just before qualifying. If not, we'll leave them as they are. If I'm not confident I can make the car better. So, let's take a look at our competitors. New ERS for Russell and for Perez tonight. Uh, Norris has got new engine and ERS tonight. So does Ocon. Max has got that new gearbox. That's a new engine for Bottas. ERS still needs to be replaced. New ERS for Joe. Uh, Albon's gearbox is going to break this weekend. Uh, new ERS for Magnussen. New gearbox for Giovinazzi. Uh, and for Maloney. Uh, new ERS for Cher. And Gasly's car looking a bit rough heading into tonight's race. Okay. Let's uh, start prepping ourselves for sprint quality. Welcome everyone. Qualifying for the sprint awaits us and we're raring to get going. In a format familiar to our drivers, three parts of qualifying will decide who sits where on the sprint race grid. A good performance today will give them a real advantage for the rest of the weekend. There's been a bit of talk about Alex Albon, Karu. How are things looking for him today? We saw them set an impressive lap time in practice, so it's a great start as they move into qualifying. But as we all know, a good performance in practice doesn't guarantee success over the rest of the weekend. So stay with us, folks. It's sure to be a good one. So it looks like this is going to be a wet start to the qualifying, as you can see, we're on inters. Put in those parts, first of all. go let's take a look okay so the front wing angle needs to come down to a five that needs to go up and that should be it Oscar Change the gearbox as well. As well as everything else. There we go. And let's take a look at his setup. Ah. Now we were running 4.5. That to me suggests that we have to go with a 5.5. means that is going to have to go back like that. That should be it. Alright then. Uh, let's go with two flying laps for the cooldown lap.
and we'll uh, start the first qualifying session. So, as always, in a session where it's going to be dry later, we could just sit in the garage, but I want to build up that baseline confidence as much as we can before the track dries up so that when we do have dry weather, we can attack the track hard and hopefully do just the one run. Just focus on the tire temps, then. Yep. Let's see what the uh, AI decides to do. You can see the weather will dip just a little bit after our first lap. And then it'll be dry by the time we get, uh, not long after we get back to the garage at the end of this double, double lap run. I'm curious okay. as to when the AI is going to start coming out. Let's go for it. So gap ahead is good. Good to push. Which of our drivers is going to have that little bit of an edge? So far as Oscar. Running them apart as well, so there's no uh, slip streaming to start with. I want to see which of them has got the quicker baseline pace. Looking pretty close at the moment. Each of them has got a purple sector. So Mick crosses the line. Here comes Oscar. And he is fractionally slower than Mick on that first lap. They've got a cool down lap and then they'll go again. Still no one else has come out, so it looks like maybe they're waiting until the rain stops before they come out. That's fine. Again, looking to build that confidence level up. Actually getting slightly damper at the moment. Should be about to, to sort of ease down a touch. Clear track ahead. We recharge off before the last corner. So we should be good on traffic. Well, let's go. Now it's starting to dry up just a touch. No improvement for Mick or Oscar in that first sector. Should see a little bit of an improvement on the rest of the lap though. Track is now drier than it was when we did our first lap.
and that goes purple in the middle. And now Oscar goes purple in the middle. Mick crosses the line and does find a little bit of an improvement, finds an extra couple of tenths. We will box at the end of this lap, please. Box at the end of this lap. And Oscar finds three tenths. Delta, Delta, so, not bad. And you can see we have uh, peak confidence now for Oscar and for Mick. And the track is going to dry up very soon. Given that it will be fine margins, we're going to do a two lap run with a cooldown with a set of slicks as well uh, and look to switch the positions between the laps so that we can get a slipstream lap in for, uh, for each driver or try and get a slipstream lap in for each driver. Well, we should be safe in Q1, in Q2 and Q3 by margins, I think, are definitely going to determine who gets through and who goes out. And we want to make sure we are clear of those fine margins. Jar looks to set his first yeah. time on his uh, outlap right now. No one else has come out yet. Time is ticking away, but the track is going to dry up very soon, as you can see. Just a couple of minutes' time, and the track will be bone dry. Let's uh, just have a little watch of Hajar, see what he does compared to us. He'll get a lap in, I think, before the uh, track dries up. In similar conditions. The Alpha, while not a, an amazing car, is certainly by no means a bad car this year. I mean, they've got two young relatively inexperienced drivers in Hajar and Bashor. Certainly lower rated than our two drivers, but they have scored points on a, you know, not too far, not a not too bad basis so far this season. I think they're into double digits now. Close to the track drying up, so we should see a little flurry of activity in the pits very soon. Exe Russell, Albon, Giovinazzi all coming out now. The jar is seven tenths of a second slower than Mick, nine tenths slower than Oscar. Is that Russell on Inters? It is. Yeah. And Albon. And Giovinazzi as well, I believe. And now everyone else is coming out on softs. So, those that went uh, a little early have uh, made a mistake. Do they continue or do they box?
they're continuing. So apart from the cars that have just boxed, well, just a jar, I think. I think everybody else is on track now. Yeah, just a jar uh, on his way back to the pits. As is uh, Albon. is close enough to get the benefit of the uh, slipstream here. At least not the full benefit anyway. Still quicker than Mick though. Did Mick get held up? No! Oh, God damn it! God damn it! All right, well, we're not changing their positions then. I don't know if Mick got held up, but uh, Oscar absolutely held up there. Evening, Clark. see just how much of a difference there is between our two drivers times at the end of this lap so Schumacher goes second Oscar is 16th did a 102.7 for Leclerc we just did a 106.1 Ugh. that's not good <laughs> that's not good at all Three and a half seconds slower. That's how much we got held up. Impeding is definitely an issue, but I mean, it's not as bad as it was in the first game. First game was terrible. This is, it's, it, I mean, this game, uh, it's not as frequent, but when it hits, I think it probably hits a little bit harder. Um, so, yeah. Clear track in front. It's Good not ideal. Nice big gap ahead. At least we'll have clear track so for this second lap. Here. Mick should be safe to get enough to get through, but Oscar definitely needs something to uh, to get through now. Strong start for Mick going purple in the first. Looking at Oscar. Everyone else is coming out for another run already. Nick absolutely flying right now. Uh, 
And a 102.5 for Mick. And Oscar, less than, a hundred, less than a tenth slower. P2 currently. And uh, almost an identical margin ahead of Leclerc as he is behind Schumacher. So our drivers are through. It's a 3-4 for Red Bull right now. We're not going to go out and do another run. We don't need to. But uh, let's see what the uh, Red Bulls can do. As Max now winds up to start his flying lap. He is going to have to contend with Bashore in front of him who is uh, slow right now on an outlap just going to catch him in a nice place by the look of it uh, we are looking at Leclerc getting a mighty slipstream here he's tucked up behind a Mercedes and he will be quicker than that car Is going to get potentially slightly compromised. But this will be very quick. Potential? No, it wasn't. A one oh two nine. which is a tenth slower. No, wait, 102.9. Uh, lap history, that's what we want. Yeah, he was uh, a tenth and a half slower, so he was held up. He was better in the first sector, but then slower in sectors two and three, running in the dirty air. Max definitely improved, as you can see, by a tenth on his second run who is in danger of getting knocked out well Maloney, Joe, Bottas and Giovinazzi are out can Vashore find enough to get through No, he can't. So there you go. It's for sure. Maloney, Joe Bottas and Joe Manazzi who are out. Once again, another miserable weekend for Mercedes is impending. Joe Manazzi must have been impeded somewhere. It's been five seconds off the pace. But uh, I don't know how much better he would have gone, whether we would have made it through or not, given that Magnussen just scraped through. But again, you can see what I was talking about, about fine margins. If we take a look at the gaps, look at those tiny little gaps in the terms of the positions. Hundreds of seconds between drivers. Thousands of seconds in some cases. Fights just 5,000 seconds behind, uh, 5 thousandths of a second behind Porsche, who was 2 thousandths of a second behind Perez. Evening, Rick. Uh, what level am I playing on? Uh, playing on uh, hard difficulty for the race, hard difficulty for um, our development, and we have other restrictions as well, uh, which are starting to have less of an impact now that we are into the midway point of Season 5. And we've finally got ourselves a, uh, a good car. We're going to start this session on Inters. It's 
to go with the used inters. No point putting on new ones. Uh, once again, we will go for two flying laps, weather dependent. We can always change this before we send them out. Let's see. What the weather's going to do? Uh, okay, send them straight out. And this time the rest of the grid looks to be coming out early. This is the driest the track's going to be for a while. Well, it will finish dry again. So once again, we will have to be on it. On the slick tyres. And this will be much more important that we get those good laps in. This time, because there's less time available. Whole field is out. Hajar just coming out of the pits now. No traffic to be concerned about. So recharge off before the last corner. Clear ahead. Push when you're ready. Once again, in this first run, keeping them apart. But we will go to slipstream when the uh, track dries up. And we have an opening lap from Schumacher, which is a 107.1. Oscar goes a tenth quicker. Strong final sector for Oscar. And we're four tenths up on Mick, uh, sorry, on Max, but Leclerc pops up between the two of us. Uh, two hundredths quicker Porsche puts in a good lap Porsche tucked up behind one yeah Porsche tucked up behind a McLaren there which one was that was it Ocon no Norris tucked up behind Norris so they can see how potent slipstreaming can be Porsche does not have that kind of pace right now Haas not having a good season this year a quick car last year, but not so much this year. We're good to push next lap. You've got a good gap ahead. So it'll be go one. Track slightly uh, wetter on this lap than it was on the first one but not by much hopefully we will see a little bit of an improvement for both drivers Not 
happening much at the moment though track getting wetter now I think any chance of a, an improved second lap has gone now but we will get that extra little bit of confidence for completing the run nothing on the radar no rain expected Copy. P4 as it stands Brilliant there we go. so not quite peak confidence Dolly but uh, not far off entry. currently P1 make sure we're cooling the car copy Leclerc coming out early very early this is going to be another interlap Gasly coming out behind him so Gasly could get a really strong slipstream here In fact, a lot of the fields coming out for another run before the track dries up. is now considerably wetter than it was on the first lap so I'm not expecting any driver to improve it's very slippery Copy. and it's still getting wetter yeah it's now about a millimetre more water on the track than it was for the first lap Should be good for two laps on those tyres. Gonna need to time this about right though. We'll speed up until we get to about five minutes to go. We're taking turn six, and that's where they slightly oh, yeah. run off uh, the track. And they definitely might a little bit of a wobble for Max, isn't it? That... Track still hasn't dried up yet, but it's about to. Start drying up, start drying up. Come on. Still not drying up. Come on. Still not. There we go. So, two flying laps. Hopefully we will be able to uh, switch their positions on the cooldown so lap. Let's concentrate on some entire prep now. Copy. So start to work on the front, so get some brake temp. Copy. Max, Ocon and Gasly all making their way onto the track. I think 
we're going to have some traffic issues to deal with. Oh yeah, we are. It maybe have delayed by another couple of seconds, but never mind. Hopefully, uh, we won't be held too badly. At least we'll have time for that second lap, and then just hope that we don't get the traffic again on the next lap. held up and now uh, Schumacher held up as well nah both my drives have been compromised damn it so we're going to to peak confidence though Well, I've got Mick into peak confidence, not so much for Oscar, who ended up losing a huge chunk of time. And I might have shot myself in the foot a little bit here. Mick, I hope, will be safe. It's not a guarantee. It's Oscar that I'm concerned about. Because his time is not good enough to get through. Not at all. You can see slipping down the order. In fact, Schumacher is not safe either. He's nearly six tenths slower than Leclerc right now. Now he's nearly nine, he's nine tenths slower, so both drivers need to find an improvement. Ah, damn it, we're getting pulled over. Now Oscar is too close. get held up now it's going to be both cars getting held up so this could be disastrous feeling we're about to get screwed over again. Okay, that's the checkered flag. Just a touch, but this should be enough. Yes, it is. We're, we're through. Well, that was definitely more complicated than it needed to be. And we are saying goodbye to Perez, to Norris, to Hajar, Seitz and Gasly. And as expected, it is Leclerc setting the pace. I don't know if Albon's pace there is genuine or if that is uh, Lipstream pace. I think it's uh, slightly boosted. But if you take Leclerc's time out of the equation, it's just three tenths from second to uh, tenth there. All right, dry running for the final session. 
Gonna initially fuel for two laps on brand new tires. We'll make a, a, a decision once we get to the track. Let's see what the weather's gonna do. It's gonna rain in four minutes. Minute and a half to do an outlap. Minute for a yeah, minute for. A, I've got time for two laps. Not unless we get rid of the cooldown lap. Oh, God damn it. So I'm not so sure we can comfortably take pole position tonight. I'm hopeful we can. But I do think we will have enough pace to uh, to win the sprint. Hopefully get a 1-2 in the sprint. We'll be able to look after our tyres better than the competition. Of course that is harder to do in the race itself. Gap ahead is good. We'll see what happens. Good to go. Clear track ahead. Let's go recharge off and push next lap. Not 100% certain we're going to have enough battery for two full flying laps back to back like this but we haven't got the time for a cool down lap unfortunately not if we want to make sure that we beat the weather I thought I could maybe squeeze Mick in front and then give him or give Oscar the slipstream, but it hasn't worked. Max has actually set the fastest time. Oscar is improving. But we did compromise him a little bit in the middle. Still gone purple though. Has he got enough battery left? He has! Wow! And if we hadn't messed around with Mick... <laughs> cool 
then we would have actually had a 1 2. Ah, feel a little stupid now. But uh, that's pretty good. First and third. That's better than I was expecting. Leclerc not leading. But look at how tight it is. There's less than one tenth separating the top five. Two tenths separating the top seven. Rain still coming. Okay. And now the track is screwed. So that's your top ten order. No one's going to improve now. It's Oscar on pole from Max Verstappen by just seven thousandths of a second. Schumacher in third, Stroll fourth, Leclerc in fifth. That helps us out a little bit because Leclerc is the biggest threat for us this weekend. Bigger threat to, than Max, bigger threat than Stroll. You know, I never actually checked. Did we get the setups right in the end? Yes, we did. And yes, we did. Excellent stuff. So there we go then, that is the end of qualifying. We have pole position and third place for Schumacher as well. Fantastic stuff. On to practice two, where we need to uh, just get our car park knowledge, oh sorry, our track knowledge up to 100. And then we will have maximum confidence for the weekend. This will be dry running, so no worries about weather. Just going to run them for the whole session. And I'll we'll switch out the parts. just about make it. So yeah, we definitely have unfinished business with Red Bull on this track. Last year, we couldn't quite keep up with uh, with Verstappen. This year, can we keep up with Leclerc? Something seems wrong. Yeah, We've had a me? wonderful start to the season so far. Can we uh, go one better? And win at the Red Bull Ring. My engine doesn't want to. Setup knowledge is at 100, car park knowledge is at 100 now. Those new underfloors fully learnt. 
just need to get the track knowledge there. Of a mistake for Stroll there. We're coming towards the end of our runs. Not far off on the old track knowledge now. Braver says, hope you get a 1 2 to really shove it to Red Bull here. Well, that is the plan. <laughs> That's what we hoped to do last season. Couldn't quite pull it off, but this season we're in a stronger position. And I would dearly love to, uh, to beat the Bulls in their own backyard. And there we go. Both of our drivers fully maxed now on confidence going into the sprint and then the race itself. Exactly where I wanted them to be. Let's get ready for the sprint. Well, the excitement levels continue to rise here as the teams prepare for the sprint. The sprint kicks off the racing action for the weekend, a 100 kilometer battle to set the grid for the Grand Prix. Points go to the top finishers in the sprint. And with no mandatory pit stops, it's all about the racing on the track. The who will reach the peak and who has a mountain to climb here at the Austrian Sprint. All right, we're going to go with the softs. We go with two extra laps of fuel. Make sure we put the good parts back in the car. Better give them a little bit of extra traction off the line as well. There we go. Let's go win ourselves a sprint race. We're ready for 24 laps around the Red Bull ring in what should be a great sprint. Drivers certainly don't shy away from overtaking on the circuit meaning we should be in for a hotly contested competition here in Austria. The 
Forget the scheduled pit stops today. It's all about racing. Here in Austria, we're all ready to go for the sprint. And it's lights out, and away we go. All right, it's not a good start for Max. Got bogged down a little off the line. He's on mediums. Just think about looking after this tire where we need to. I don't want you fighting. Avoid overtake, avoid overtake. All right, so we have the one two immediately calming the car down. Need to defend that. Leclerc has got himself up into fourth ahead of Stroll. Nobody on hards this weekend. We have seen sprints in the past where they have done that. We will let them fight to a degree. Because hopefully that will help us stay ahead of the Red Bulls. Like I said, not too worried tonight about who gets the win, as long as we do get the win. But we do need to make sure we protect those tyres. We'll save our battery for a couple of laps time as well. Stroll has got back in front of Leclerc. That's good. Definitely looking after our uh, stops as much as we can while still having good pace. They're wearing about the same as the uh, the mediums, slightly better than most of the mediums actually. And uh, certainly better than the other soft soft tire runners. Max is going to be more of an issue than the player, I think, in the sprint because he is on those mediums and has the track position. But if he gets passed by Stroll, that will make things interesting. Got an opportunity to break away a little bit here.
Okay, push. Let's go. Not really breaking away. They are just about keeping Max out of the DRS, and that's allowed Stroll to get through. Which helps us. Although Max has reclaimed that position again. Let's look after these tyres. Now we can keep Max out of the DRS. It's going to be tricky to do. We're at the bottom of the pack, don't worry, Eugene. And he's back in it already. So, breakaway chance did not work for us. Stroll's going to put Max under pressure again. And this is the kind of slipstream running I've wanted to see from our drivers every time we've tried this, where they do get those overtakes and don't really compromise each other uh, we've tried this on a number of occasions at various different tracks and it's never really worked but you know consistently it's worked for the odd lap here and there but more often than not they've slowed themselves down does not seem to be a factor here at this track but I do get nervous every time they go side by side into a corner like that The first failed overtake we've seen, I think. build the battery quickly if we can here.
bring the pack up. Just managing our pace nicely here. on recharge please definitely in a much better position than the rest of the soft tire runners still tires are comparable to uh, the soft uh, to the mediums not really saving enough right now Try and save a little bit more if we can. Okay, mate, so let's look after these tyres. Recharge on. Of course, by doing this, I am opening the door for Verstappen to uh, get a little bit curious about a, a, a lunge. Uh, recharge on, please. Yeah, just not comfortable. <laughs> How much our pace is going to drop by doing that. Right now, kind of waiting for the point where I can uh, try and make a sprint and break Max away from the cars behind as their tyres start to fall away faster than uh, faster than ours and mix. Their pace will hopefully drop enough that Max will break away from them so that when we then break away from Max he won't have anyone to help boost him and we can go back to swapping positions and pulling away from him that's the plan whether or not we actually get the chance to implement that or, or not before we run out of laps I don't know okay, but I mean if, if we stay like this you know, this will work. Just holding position. Making sure that he can't get through. We're almost out of spare fuel. So we'll save that what's left of that now. Just for the last couple of laps when we do try and sprint away. Let's go recharge on. We need to focus on the energy now. Really not worried about the fastest lap in the sprints. As I say this every time we're in a sprint, it's uh, bragging rights only. It doesn't mean anything. There's no bonus point for it. The 
fastest lap in the race itself is what counts. It certainly doesn't count towards the sponsor goal of the fastest lap either. That's only in the race. The tyre temps have dipped a little bit, which means Oscar's tyres are now slightly underperforming. Getting back into the dirty air will heat those back up a touch. Ten laps to go. We have nine and a half laps to go now. There you see the uh, tyre life differences. Porsche's tyres definitely struggling a little bit, as are Valtteri's. He's down to 46% on his. in Max these two have been really well behaved Neither of them has done anything uh, stupid yet. They've been uh, swapping positions multiple times a lap. No one's pushed anyone else off yet. <laughs> Hopefully that will continue. How are you doing, Anthony? We've got a yellow flag. It's a safety car. Magnuson. This is debris for a front wing. It shouldn't be too long. Maybe. No. Who has had the whoopsie? Is it for sure? Yes. <laughs> there we see. For sure has uh, hit the barrier and swung back into the track by the look of it. Okay. That makes things interesting. Now, we will have a chance to really sprint away in the uh, last yep, few laps. Yep, it's the Haas that's affected there. Oh, it's a collision with Maloney. And they see Maloney just pushing him into the barrier. The team glued to the monitors and watching their hopes crumble away. Yeah, I'd completely forgot England were playing tonight as well. I can't remember who safety we're playing. Car, safety car. Stay positive. Could be. So work on front tyres as much as you can. Crash ahead, crash ahead, crash ahead. Be careful. I've just seen how big a gap there is between Leclerc and Porsche. Oh, and they're boxing. Now this was at turn one. Oh, and a fairly substantial crash there. And that won't do their confidence any good. Oh, that it makes things very interesting. It's... The soft tyre runners are boxing. Stroll and Leclerc both coming in for new tyres. Porsche is coming in as well. Oh man, half the field's coming in. 
and Stroll does not get out in front of Leclerc. So Leclerc has jumped Stroll there. Where is he going to feed out? He's going to come out in eighth place behind Hajar. Not very often we see a full safety car in a sprint. There is the tyre situation. Look how many people have boxed onto new softs. So we are relying on all those medium runners <laughs> to keep the soft back. Perez is going to struggle, I think. Perez is going to drop down the order very quickly. I do expect Leclerc and Stroll to uh, punch their way back up pretty quickly. But uh, I don't think they'll be able to actually catch us in time. We have six laps to go. Minimum of five racing laps, depending on whether the safety car comes in this lap or not. Sorry, maximum of uh, five racing laps. It might be four if the safety car stays out another lap. We've got enough tyres to get through and we should have enough grip to be able to break away from Max as well. Field has joined back up. Started getting another lap behind the safety car. That's excellent news for us. got Ocon in fourth place and he's staying the points he's got a cushion of three cars behind him before Leclerc so he's got a chance Let's 
just keep it on the track. Copy. Are we getting another lap behind the safety car? We are. Oh, fantastic. So, just three racing laps then. I'm sure the safety car's going to come in at the end of this one. Got more than enough fuel. And now we've got more than enough tyres. Break away from Max. And it also means Leclerc is maybe only going to get one or two places. He's certainly not going to get back up to where he was. But that's taking points away from Leclerc, which will help Schumacher in the uh, championship standings and also helps us in the constructors that's more points that rebel are dropping tonight get a notification any second now there it is safety car in this lap so start to get ready Copy. push a bit more let's push come on Copy. And we're off. And Ocon's trying to jump Max. Oh, if he can get him, that would be amazing. DRS will switch on at the end of this lap. I want to try and break Max before the lap ends, if we can. Leclerc's got past her jar. Did not take long. fight now not this close to the line when uh, so much is at stake Second lead. So slow. So Leclerc is going to look to dive up the inside of Albon. Couldn't quite get the move done there. And he's not getting the move done into turn one either. But Albon is now out of DRS range. He slips up the inside at turn one. Magnussen making the move on Ocon. Mm. 
Well, it's not quite as many points as McLaren would have hoped for. They are still going to score some points for the first time in a while. Just need Leclerc to stay in sixth place, but he's going to have a look. And I can hold him back. Yes, he can. Fantastic stuff. And a fastest lap set for Norris at the end. Piastri has just gone and won the sprint. Oscar Piastri there with a stellar drive. So there we go. We made those soft tyres work. And that sprint win was well deserved. On to the Grand Prix now. And that sets us up very nicely now for the race itself. Front row lockout. And a brilliant sprint win for Oscar Piastri today. And what a well deserved P1 finish that was. Absolutely outstanding. Race day has arrived, and the time has almost come for these drivers to fight it out, wheel to wheel. Four years on from the circuit being renamed to the Red Bull Ring, Max Verstappen became the first driver to bring an eponymous car to victory here in 2018. Garoon, what are your thoughts on Mick Schumacher and his chances for the race? To be honest, I think they're exceeding expectations and impressing a lot of people with their performances. And Austria is always full of surprises, so who knows what lies in store here at the Red Bull Ring. Okay then, what strategy are we going to go for? I think probably... Now, I'm going to start on the softs. We'll look to maybe get a little bit of an undercut. We'll look after the tyres where we can. with three extra laps of fuel. I'm going to try and do what we did in the sprint, break away at the start and then let our drivers fight and swap positions to try and uh, keep that lead and uh, maybe establish a bit of a bigger gap. It all depends on what the cars behind are doing fire-wise. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's send him to the grid. Here among the Austrian mountains, the grid is now set for the 71 laps of the Red Bull Ring. You and I won't be the only ones keeping an eye on Oscar Piastri, Carew. They start in P1, but will they be able to stay there? The first corner could be so crucial. And the time has come. Let's go racing. It's the race we've all been waiting for. It's the Austrian Grand Prix. And it's lights out, and away we go. So, Max is also on softs. Having Ocon and Magnussen on mediums will potentially help us keep uh, Leclerc at bay for a little while. Max has got the jump. Yeah, having Magnuson and Ocon where they are 
they are definitely going to be slower. And if they keep scrapping side by side, they will hopefully hold up everybody behind as well. I'm not that averse to letting Max get through. And then just staying behind him. Let him do the heavy lifting. We can really look after the tyres. And then when it gets around to pit stop time, we'll have enough pace in the tyres to really sprint before our stop. But I've uh, got to get away from Magnussen first of all. So, Max is probably going to get through against Oscar pretty soon. DRS enabled. Currently P1. So, car behind is Verstappen. We have now got a little bit of a gap to Magnussen. As long as we can maintain that gap through the DRS zones, we should be good. Max gets into the lead. This will give Mick the DRS. And Oscar as well. Let these guys go. Coming. No risks. Coming. Avoid overtaking. Avoid overtaking. Coming. Now we're just going to stay tucked up. We'll let Max set the pace on his uh, tyres on uh, normal pace push. As long as we stay close enough to keep the DRS. And we can now start to build a gap on the medium runners behind. And then once Max's tyres start to wear out, we'll have the pace from having looked after our tyres to break away from him. So it'll be a cagey first stint. And then it'll be a little explosive towards the end of that stint. that Mick doesn't get dropped. Yeah, I'm going to recharge our batteries again soon. Just want to try and re... You know, not re... Uh, just want to try and establish that gap back to Magnuson a little bit more before we try doing that. Ocon has slipped through. So far, those two are doing exactly what I wanted them to do, and that's scrap the position and keep Leclerc behind. actually made the move, which I didn't expect. Okay, good job. Currently P1. Max is going to really <laughs> fly past us again in a moment. Okay, uh, we'd like you to slow down, please. 
There is the battle behind us. There's Porsche Air and Stroll scrapping side by side. Claire being uh, kept at bay. second gap almost now back to Ocon and Magnussen Already you can see the difference in the tyre wear between us and Max. So we're letting him do the heavy lifting, setting the pace while we just stay tucked up in his slipstream, getting that DRS every lap and really protecting our tyres. And Stroll has interjected himself into that fight. He got past Leclerc and Porsche. Has now passed Magnussen and getting ready to make a move on Ocon. And gets that move done. So that will increase the pace of the pack behind us. With Stroll now up into fourth. So that three and a half second gap is already down to 2.7, 2.6. And... Uh, while Stroll is pushing it will come down a bit more hopefully it will start to stretch out again we could just focus on charging the pack Copy. I see Stroll almost dropped off on completely at the end of that lap Gaps down to just over two seconds now. Lean on the tyres as much as you can. has now broken away from Ocon. Leclerc has got past Magnussen. So that little resistance that we had behind us starting to fall apart. Here comes Leclerc. And he just breezes past Ocon there. He's going to be on stroll pretty quickly. And he will have the pace to break away from stroll. So he's going to be catching up to the back of us any moment 
right now. We are all about keeping our tyres as fresh as we can. Ideally, we need Max to pick his pace up a little bit. It's a little too early to break away. Keeping an eye on that gap behind, though. is coming down. So we'll go recharge off. Copy. We need some pace. Copy. Keep pushing, you know what to do. Copy. Now we're going to start to try and uh, move ourselves up a bit. Let's keep the pressure on, mate. Copy. Leclerc is through. Sweet. Briefly. Well done. Nice, healthy advantage tyre-wise over not just Mick now, uh, Max now, but also Stroll and Leclerc. Going to keep going like this for another few laps. Oh, we've got a VSC. It's a red flag. Oh, now that makes things red interesting. Flag, red flag. That is Ocon, I think. Oh, yeah. There we go. Ocon. And uh, Hajar, side by side, they've had a collision. So, what do we do with strategy? One thing I could do is that. Or I could do that and I think that might be the smarter option not sure how good our pace is going to be on hard tyres it was our Achilles heel last season but yeah it's two seconds quicker and we'll have more flexibility on on that as well so hmm the other option is just going medium medium We did keep extra mediums back. And that's actually slower. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
We will go to hard tyres for our middle stint. Now we should be able to take a look here. So here we go, heading into turn one. Pushing a bit too hard at this point. Oh, yeah, double impact. In that, as you can see. So and both I of them are out. Confidence will have taken a knock. And McLaren had a chance for more points and you can with uh, both cars tonight. That's now gone. What is everyone else going to do? Have we got it right by going onto hards? We're ready to get this race underway. Mediums get... for Max and Stroll. And Leclerc, right I think, down. also on Hello, hards with us. Go. Yes, he is. Keep your pace up. Both of our drivers struggling off the line a little bit there. He expected with the extra fuel, the, uh, the fact that we're on hards and that I'm not pushing the tyres. Just got to make sure we don't get jumped by Leclerc. That would be uh, a real problem. So Max is probably going to go medium, medium. He might even go medium hard. He won't be going medium soft. Not unless he really pushes those mediums and goes medium soft soft. change their defense status as well that's another reason why they got jumped Schumacher being held up by Stroll here And get Schumacher back in range if we can. Okay, push. Let's go. Copy. Back on. Yeah. Come on, get in range, get in range. Ah, just dropping. Mm. 
Oh, Russell just overtook Charles Leclerc. Thank you, George Russell. Slow Oscar down. Nobody keep pushing. To give Mick that opportunity without risking getting He's dropped in the process. Mick is out of battery. Copy. I think he's going to be okay. He is excellent stuff. So. Okay, mate, let's keep looking after these tyres. There we go. Let's look after these tyres. So we are sitting second and third. And now we're playing the patient game again. And it's not gone well for uh, Leclerc so far. He is the quicker of the two Red Bulls right now. Supposedly, his engine's in better shape. Though Max does have that new gearbox tonight. With the field being bunched up though, it has stopped him from really utilizing his pace. We saw on the restart in the uh, sprint, when he had those new softs on, how quickly he managed to punch his way up a couple of places. Once uh, clean air started to form, and I think that will potentially be the same again. It's gonna be a rough few laps for him while he's on the hard tires. But I think as soon as the mediums start to wear a little bit more, we'll start to see some genuine uh, pace from Leclerc again. Need to focus on getting the pack up. Copy. So whereas I thought the first stint would be cagey and then it would be hopefully relatively smooth sailing from that point onwards, it's now going to be a cagey second stint as well. Okay, recharge on. Copy. Now I've got to wait again for Max's tyres to uh, burn up a little bit. Before we try and break away from him as he is on that grippier faster compound now it was in the first thing we were all on softs it was just a case of letting his tires wear out and then he wouldn't be able to keep up not the same this time round now we're on a slower compound if we weren't in this drs he would be you know stretching the lead on us Go 
And then Mick get into some pressure here from Stroll. That was silly. Let's pick our pace up. Let's go. Yeah, couple. We've already got a few gaps starting to open up. Porsche is just about hanging on to the back of uh, Leclerc, but he is in danger of dropping away. There's already a two and a half second gap between Magnussen and Albon. Really getting the savings on the tyres that I was hoping for. Leclerc is looking after his tyres better than we are at the moment. Surely he's not going to try and do what he did at uh, Barcelona and just go the whole race on those hards. I need to box right at the death on, after a puncture. Not again. So our confidence levels have been reset from the restart so we are building those back up a bit start to get some really big gaps opening up now the gap between uh, Magnussen and Perez who's got past Albon is now over three seconds nearly three and a half seconds Porsche is dropping to about two seconds now behind Leclerc behind this breakaway pack at the front and we're seeing a few gaps opening up further down the order as well Norris has really dropped down the order now well into peak confidence thanks to his multiple overtakes on the Stappen. Schumacher lagging a little bit behind but he is getting defensive boosts for holding back Stroll. His battery is almost fully charged now so we can take him out of the uh, top-up mode put him into neutral 
in just a few corners time. Now Leclerc's tyre wear is starting to catch back up again. Russell and Perez on softs, so they're probably going to have to go hard as their next set of tyres. Unless they're planning on uh, restopping. which is not a strategy that will work well here. Is this your season two, Monza, Anthony, that you're uh, doing tonight? VSC, Magnussen making a mistake. Okay, Magnussen's off. It's possible to breathe. Is everybody okay? Yep, uh, so the medical car's there on the right, he's okay. And if we watch Magnussen... So, expect the Ferraris the to uh, consider boxing here. Up after that. They are on the uh, soft tyres. As for the team back in the garage, that was a tough moment to watch. I wonder. I do still have another set of softs. It is slower, but we will be stopping under a VSC. It's not really a gamble I need to take. Will the Ferraris consider stopping, getting off those softs? Porsche might change tyres as well. This is actually the worst on the grid right now, after that little coming together with uh, Magnussen. Staying out. I think if their tie wear was maybe 10% worse, yes, they would be boxing.
So this is just uh, neutralizing the pace. Allows us to uh, get the more life saved on these tires. Russell's at risk on the restart. He is just about a second behind. Might get caught out on the restart if he's not careful. And if that happens, Leclerc's going to jump all over him. Russell stay with Stroll. Push on your Just about. There's no turn off of the DRS. Not under a VSC. Very close though. Just kept it. Now he's at risk, though. He might have, might have just lost it. He did. Here comes Leclerc. He'll throw it around the outside. Couldn't quite get the move done, but... Russell is still out of DRS range and he should be easy pickings this time. And there we go, moved on before the braking zone. So, they're now up to fifth. See if we can break. Overtake is available. Understood. Lovely stuff. That's a good job, wasn't it? That establishes us as a one-two. Both drivers in the peak confidence bracket. Mick only just Oscar a little bit more comfortably. Go for a fastest lap attempt here as well with Oscar. And there it is. A 105.3. Mick's going to potentially go even quicker this lap. Needs to defend that. Let these guys go. 
Stroll's got in front of Max. Now that we're up front and with a little bit of a gap, can we stay away? Roll is going to try and come with us if he can. Hopeful we can keep him back. Also hopeful that Stroll and Verstappen will keep Leclerc behind. As he is now on the best tyres of those three. The Perez boxes. So, what tyres? for we're going to put on it's got to be hard surely it is hard tires for Checo it's going to drop him all the way to the back of the grid and we've got the gap up to two seconds now as Max and Stroll are swapping places How far behind is Perez? He's uh, 11 and a half seconds behind Maloney, 12 seconds back. That Ferrari's not amazingly quick, so without the DRS, it's going to take him quite a while before he's back in uh, any kind of position. And by going early like this, it is going to mean he's going to be vulnerable later in the race. Russell and Porsche are now boxing. Hard tyres for Russell. Good stop. It's out before Porsche Air comes through, so he wasn't delayed. That's not a bad stop for Porsche Air, actually. <laughs> uh, that looked a half decent stop for Haas. is looking just about perfect right now we can keep our tires at this pace now for the rest of this stint i think now we can do a little bit of micromanaging to get these batteries back up Charles trying to find a way through getting boxed in behind the uh, the cars in front swapping places is he going to have a run on Max here no he's not That's exactly what I need I need the two medium runners to, uh, to squabble, slow each other down and keep Leclerc behind them.
recharge on, please recharge on. We need to focus on the energy now. And there's a big gap now between Leclerc and Sainz. 11 and a half seconds. Russell has almost caught up to Giovinazzi. Lapping almost a second quicker on that pressure rubber. But that might be because he got past uh, Bottas on that previous lap. Perez's pace, not great. 107.5. again Leclerc is being frustrated by the battling in front of him exactly what I wanted to see Now Sainz is in. Hard tyres for Sainz, that's him to the end. Need to focus on getting the pack up. Giovinazzi's in as well. And hard tyres for Giovinazzi. Right, Stroll is going to be in quite possibly at the end of this lap. That is going to free up Leclerc to have a real crack at Verstappen. And there is Stroll coming in. And immediately Leclerc goes straight on the attack. Red Bulls go side by side through the turn. And Leclerc's through. It's another yellow flag. Three charge on. Lock up for Alex Albon. There. Now Alex Albon is part of this. Oh, all right so far. Struggling with the car, and they ended up their own passenger. Thought I saw a penalty flop. Uh, oh no, I just saw the penalty warning for uh, Ocon, which will carry into the next Grand Prix. And Leclerc is pushing hard. Can't break away from Max. Max is only going to be going another couple of laps himself before he boxes. Claire's pushing really hard to catch back up to us. I'm hopeful we can keep pulling away from him without needing to use our battery. As for sure dives in. Now, Bashir's already had his hard tyres, and they were not in great shape. So, what is he going to do? Got to go mediums. Can they last? Oh, it's a bad stop. It's a bad stop. It's a really bad stop.
at Lifton Coast where you can. Well, 5 8 for Charles Leclerc last lap. He was really pushing hard. I'm hoping he's out of battery now. But I don't think he is. <laughs> Did a 107.1, slightly quicker than us. This is where we need to get our slipstream overtakes going. And I think Max has got enough pace left in his car to uh, do the same with Charles. Gasly and Joe are in. side by side through these corners is not what we want because this is where we do lose time uh, mediums for the shore and mediums for Joe Max going another lap Claire is closing I'm going to up our tyre pace now Let's push, come on. Because Leclerc is looking close. We've got another yellow flag. Is that someone just going wide? It is, Valtteri. Right, so this was the fourth corner. And that's... Just oh, a no, little skirmish into the gravel wanted. there. New fastest lap for Teo Porsche. Russell's got his way back up to sixth, so uh, the undercut has worked so far for George, but his tyres, well, 20% down now. He's going to be vulnerable later in this Grand Prix. Max now sub 30% uh, sub 30 on his tyres. And now he boxes. So, this is medium tyres. Kind of got to be, I think. It is, it's medium. Okay, that's good. Does mean there is a good chance we will come out behind Max, though. He will be getting an undercut. It depends if Max gets caught up in traffic or not. He's coming out right behind Russell. And he's going to get passed by Maloney. Maloney should get him into turn four. And have the DRS wide open. Maloney's tyres aren't good enough, no wonder. Yeah, Max is uh, going on a, a very, very quick outlap. Try and get those tyres up to temperature. This is exactly what we need from our boys. Stretching that gap to Leclerc, who's isolated now. Does not have DRS. And on a track like this, where DRS is dominant, three zones back to back all long zones as well it really does make a big difference to your lap time when you are trying to hunt down cars that are doing this and you have no DRS you have to push tyres and your fuel and your battery just to stand a chance of closing them up and if you can't get in that range as soon as you run out of tyres fuel battery you start dropping all the way back again so we're doing exactly what we need to here as we get ready for our pit stops. A couple more laps to go. We will try and stretch an extra lap or two if we can. Just so we've got a little bit more soft tyre to play with. Our 
far behind is Max. 21 seconds behind. They are pulling away from Leclerc by a couple of tenths on lap. going to come out ahead of Maloney but I think probably maybe a little bit behind Max when we do make our stop supposed to be boxing Mick on the next lap we're going to go two more laps before we box Mick Not this lap, but next. Norris comes in. Max has now caught up to Russell. And should breeze past the Ferrari. Soft tyres for Norris. So that means Leclerc will be soft tiring as well. To his credit, Russell is holding Max back. Expected that move to be done by now. And Leclerc has boxed. Leclerc is in. As mediums for Leclerc. Oh, did not expect that. is past Russell and right on the back of Stroll. Schumacher is in. This needs to be a good stop. Point three, and it's solid. Okay, it's going to be close on pit exit. Push, push. We're out behind Russell, but we are still ahead of Charles Leclerc. Excellent. Oscar boxing at the end of this lap. Slow. We'll be tight to exit. Can we get out in front of Leclerc? 
we can just that gap's going to be a lot smaller than 2.6 seconds Mick going for a fastest lap attempt we'll do the same with Oscar at the end of this lap Right, let's go for it now because I don't want do Leclerc to get the DRS off us and come with us. And he's going to, unfortunately. Damn it. Four point seven. And Mick into the lead. Oscar gets the move done on George. Recharge on, please recharge on. Let's look after these tyres. No more DRS. New fastest lap for Oscar, 104.5. And we've got that two second gap again. Beautiful bit of movement from Oscar there as he takes both of them Lovely. in the run to turn four. Good job. Fantastic stuff. No energy. We can just focus on charging the pack. And that's a 1036, and that should be a very secure fastest lap now. So now we have a two second gap to stroll. Hopefully, that is us sorted now to the flag. So Max trying to find a way past stroll. Leclerc hasn't got into range yet. Stroll can somehow get himself on the podium ahead of the two Red Bulls. I would be delighted. Then I will settle for a Red Bull 3 4, which I think is inevitably what is going to happen. Right on board with Charles Leclerc. As he watches uh, the battle in front of him, trying to get onto the back of it, but not quite getting into range. And he's, he's isolated at the moment, doesn't have that DRS, but if he can get onto the back of his teammate or stroll, the other one is uh, behind. That will bring him right back into play. And meanwhile, we are stretching our lead up to 3.2 seconds now. Mm. 
and Claire now on the cusp of DRS. He's got it. And Claire is now in range. So this is going to become a three-way fight now for third. Just going to run our tyres like this for another few laps. Before we turn them back up. Maloney has boxed again, and now he's gone for a set of softs. And the gap is still creeping up. Stroll doing a wonderful job for us here on the slower tyres, holding up both of the medium shot Red Bulls. Oh, it's another yellow flag. That is uh, a Williams off at turn one. It's Giovinazzi. It was the Williams driver we see there. Nothing at this point. The car fails to respond, just unable to control the car by that point. It's a big lockup. He's taking some life out of his tyres. Leclerc now getting a little interested in the back of Max's car. How perfect would it be if Leclerc locked up? and took out Max. Not only would that be both Red Bulls in serious trouble in this race, but potential powertrain damage to one, if not both of their cars as well. It would certainly be powertrain damage to Max's car, getting shunted in the rear like that. Turn our tyres back up. So our pace should start picking up now. I just hope that my drivers reward my confidence in them by letting them fight. By not taking each other out. Because if they do, <laughs> that might be the end of their fighting amongst each other this season. Max does get in front. Control, retake the place. Not this lap. And now four and a half seconds. Here comes Stroll. Gonna have a lunge up the inside. 
he'll get the DRS and that should be the position and Stroll moves back in front and Leclerc almost finds a way past Max as well there is the tyre situation Norris in eighth is catching Porsche Air. So could be more points for McLaren on the cards tonight. Ferrari currently have both their cars in the top ten, but Gasly is closing on Perez. Or is that simply because he was getting DRS from overtaking the shore? He is closing. Max back in front of Stroll, but the gap's now five seconds. It's looking good. It's looking very good. gets alongside Stroll he's got the slipstream and he's got the move done so Leclerc suddenly gets catapulted up into third place and he hold the position though Max is going to come back at him with DRS Stroll got Max I think that is Leclerc free and clear in third now Six seconds, the gap. Let's see if that starts to come down. He's definitely trying to break away. This is going to be a quick lap for Charles here. A 105.5. That's going to be crucial for Charles. Norris overtakes Porsche. Seventh place now for Norris. Gasly all over the back of Perez for the final point. Norris might even catch and pass Russell here. He's got enough laps to do it with the pace that he's got right now. Meanwhile, Leclerc was not able to break away from Stroll. But he does seem to have enough pace to keep him at bay and with Stroll going with him it's Max who's looking like he might get dropped here
Max is out of DRS range. So Stroll and Leclerc looking to break away a little bit. This will theoretically make it easier for Stroll to get in front of Leclerc, but then harder to stay in front if he does manage that. Five to go. Just five laps to go. God, the laps tap, uh, tap, uh, tick down so quickly around this track here. We are looking very comfortable right now. And here comes Lance. Can he get the move done into turn four? Gonna try and go around the outside. Leclerc covers that off. Stroll will stay tucked up for another lap. Porsche has got back in front of Norris. And now I don't think there's going to be enough time to catch Russell. Because Russell's pace has picked up a little bit. Closed by half a second a lap, it's too much of a gap. We're now seven seconds clear of this fight. Leclerc's pace being compromised a little bit, having to go defensive. Stroll gets past, but he's giving up the DRS. Leclerc has the inside line. He's going to stretch a nice little gap again. A bit more breathing room. It's not over yet. This is definitely going to be a fight all the way to the line, I think, for this final podium spot. And which of our two is going to win? They are side by side every lap. We're letting them fight to the line. Will Oscar get the clean sweep of uh, pole position, fastest lap, sprint win and race win? Or will Mick spoil that party and take the win for himself? Still, Stroll is right on the back of Charles Leclerc. Just two laps to go. I'm getting nervous about letting them race like this. <laughs> getting very nervous. Keep getting flashbacks of Hamilton and Rosberg.
Evening, Adrian. It's the final lap. Here comes Mick. This is going to be the zone that determines the win, I think. Can Stroll take the podium away from Charles? Come on, come on, Stroll. He's done it. Can he hold it? Oscar wins from Mick. Stroll is going to hold off Leclerc. That is fantastic. And it is another clean, sweet weekend for Oscar Piastri. Oscar Piastri is the winner. A result like that absolutely speaks to all the hard work they've put into their career. Just phenomenal. Let's see. Russell is going to come home a distance six, but it is points for Ferrari. Norris is just about going to hold off Porsche and that's solid points for McLaren have they turned a corner have they found some performance that again Steins brings it home in ninth and Perez will just hold off Gasly for 10th so both Ferraris score some points tonight Joe in 12th that's a pretty good result from the Mercedes given where they are right now for sure 13th couldn't quite make points work tonight uh, Albon down in 14th. He was looking good at one point this weekend. Well, only 15th. Bottas a long way back in 16th. And Giovinazzi has been lapped. Magnussen, Ocon and Hajar all failing to finish. Now, wasn't it an excellent showing from Oscar Piastri? That was a really well-executed race, I thought. Major credit to the driver, the pit wall, and the whole team for that win. Pure relation there as the driver regroups with a team that works so hard to see this moment. With such a strong performance from Piastri, there's no denying that he's earned that place on the podium today. And that's excellent, seeing both the team's drivers up there on the podium together. Well, there were mountains to overcome here in Austria, but those three managed to climb to the top. And down there in the Alpha Tauri garage, Karim, what would they be making of that race, do you think? I doubt they could be much happier. A win and a podium place. What a great way to round out the weekend. And that's it for this weekend here in Austria. For the next round, we're heading back to the heart of the UK. Get ready for a race to remember in Silverstone, the cradle of Formula One. Confirmation of the final result. It is a perfect weekend for Oscar. He wins the sprint. He wins the race. He got the pole position and the fastest lap. Maximum points this weekend for Oscar to really stretch his lead over Max in the Drivers' Championship, who is in fifth place tonight. Mick in second will stretch his lead over Charles Leclerc and will try and close down Max. Could we get Mick into the second place in the Drivers' Championship? We'll find out in just a moment. Uh, good race for Stroll. Up four places to take the final podium spot and more points away from Red Bull tonight. Excellent stuff. Good race for George, up seven places to finish in six. Ferrari really need those points. 
and uh, a good result for Norris as well. McLaren desperately need those points. Haas haven't scored for a while. They've been stuck on five. Uh, that will put them up to nine points tonight with those points from Teo. Good points again from Alpine with uh, Sites getting up into the top ten. And Perez just hanging on at the death to take that uh, final point. In the bottom half of the standings, you can see a good race for Vashore up at seven places after crashing in the sprint. But uh, it was a little bit too much work for him to get back into a points position uh, in the race itself. Uh, and a bad race for Albon. Down six places. Let's take a look at the driver's standings. Oscar now on 222 points, ahead of Max on 156. We have a 56-point lead over Max Verstappen. That is wonderful stuff. And Mick is now just 11 points behind Max in the driver's standings as well, stretching his gap over Charles Leclerc by another 10 points. He now leads him by 34. Russell uh, stretches his gap over Gasly and is just one away from hitting triple digits. Norris uh, closing the gap to Gasly a little bit there. There's just seven points apart now. Stroll with some big points for him, jumping him up two places in the standings above the two Alpine drivers, uh, who both scored points, but not many. A little bit further down, and you see uh, not been a great season for Perez so far. He's up with 25 points now. Ocon getting some more points for McLaren from the sprint, obviously failing to finish in the race. So uh, some good points for McLaren tonight. They desperately need those because they've been really struggling in the last couple of races. Good points for Porsche. He jumps above Hajar in the standings. And it's just Joe and Maloney who are yet to score in the constructors' standings. 59 points for us this weekend. We are now 100 points clear of Red Bull in second. I know I said at the beginning of the season this was going to be our year. That was more optimism than anything else. Um, but uh, it's definitely looking like it's going to be our year now. We have built one hell of a car this year. Three years of struggling. Good fourth season. Um, and we've really kicked on this year as well. Ferrari in third on 124 points. Being caught by Aston Martin. Just 12 behind them now. Alpine in fifth. Have been closed up a bit by McLaren. Uh, who have been strong in the previous seasons, but have really faded at the beginning of this season. Starting to come good, maybe? Or is it just the nature of this track? We'll find out at Silverstone, I suppose. Uh, more points for Williams. They're on 45 points now. Alfa Romeo still on 10 in 8th place. Pass now just one behind them. And Mercedes still bottom and still just the one point. In the pit stop challenge, Red Bull getting a maximum of uh, 33 points tonight. Uh, getting better stops than us, a 2.1 and a 2.2 .2 versus our 2.3 and 2.4. So we will lose some ground, but we are still top uh, by 30 points in the pit stop challenge. It is definitely a two horse race. Ferrari in third on 147, less than half of our points. Uh, McLaren in fourth. Losing a little bit of ground to Ferrari. Uh, Alpine trying to close that gap a little bit. Mercedes get another point and uh, four more points for Aston. Still no points for Williams, Alpha or Haas. And they see just confirmation of our times. A 2.3 for Mick, a 2.4 for Oscar. Let's take a look at our driver report cards. Uh, the numbers are going to be a little skewy because we had them in low defend, high overtake. So there should be lots of successful overtakes, lots of failed defences. Let's see. Across the whole weekend, Mick had 41 successful overtakes, 22 failed, 26 successful defences, 37 failed. Massive numbers. And uh, let's have a look at Oscar. 46 and 33 in the overtakes, 19 and 43 in the defending. Uh, so <laughs> a lot of failed uh, for both drivers, but a lot of successfuls as well. No experience for Ollie this weekend. It was a sprint, so uh, no running for him. But we will put him in the car for Silverson uh, for practice one. As far as the sponsors go, we did remember to set some targets and incentives, some guarantees tonight. 
as far as the incentives go, we got the fastest lap. We got two in the top four in the qualifying. And then for the guarantees, we finished two in the top four and got both cars in Q2 and both in Q3. So we make about a million on top of our base rate for four extra in the uh, uh, to go into our bank account there. Our car park test center upgrade is done. Lovely stuff. Josh Packett's rating goes up to a 91 overall. Molly Behrman goes up to an 84 overall. Beautiful stuff. I'm back to 17 and a half mil in the bank. New ATR period starts today as well. So when the uh, next research project finishes, we will get a new part underway. Uh, we did have a front wing failure on mixed car, so we are going to have to replace that. Let's go ahead and do that now. So we have one spare front wing. That's not going to be enough, so let's go ahead and make one extra. There we go. We've got one spare chassis, and that is going to go at the end of the race. Uh, we've got a rear wing at risk, a suspension at risk, two suspensions at risk. So... suspension is going to be the next project I think we do need to get a new rear wing done as well yeah, we'll hold off on making any more spare parts for now in the F2 race it's a win for Gabriel Bortoletto ahead of uh, Nicolas Solov and uh, Manuel Gautier uh, the F3 race it's Vito Amato ahead of uh, Safia Ahmad and Taylor Barnard There is the improvement to our car park test center going from a uh, an 80 percent state on a level three to a full state on a level four gives us a nice big boost to our uh, gains with new parts board review is coming up but, uh, a month to go and uh, three races to go uh, right sorry two races to go silverstone and hungary then it'll be the mid-season break uh, oh no, Spa is the mid-season break, isn't it? Or is Spa? No, Spa's the first race back, I think. Or is it? I can't remember. Let's have a look at the calendar. Ah, no, so we've got Spa and then we've got our mid-season review. There we go. And then it's the mid-season break before Zambord. Okay, so uh, research projects. We've got one finishing tomorrow, actually. It's the underfloor. So we'll be able to get a new suspension project started straight away. Let's uh, just double check our other facilities before we go any further. Everything looking good there. Everything fine there as well. Operational facilities. Quality is starting to get a little low. Weather center is getting a little low. Everything else is being taken care of. Check in with the board. See what they thought about uh, this weekend. Surprise, surprise. They were delighted. <laughs> uh, yeah, what a, what a race weekend it's been for us. Uh, a one-two in the sprint and the race really sticking it to uh, to Red Bull in the uh, in their home track that makes me very very happy we are definitely on target to uh, to beat the Bulls this season you know we uh, we ran them close at times last year but we only got the two wins last year uh, we did have quite a lot of podiums 12 podiums so 12 races with a podium uh, I think I forget exactly how many podiums we got overall in the end uh, but, you know, we've already stomped all over that this season. Uh, as you can see, uh, we currently have six wins from ten races. That's not counting the sprints. We've won the Baku sprint and we've won the Austria sprint. So 100% uh, win rate in the sprint so far as well. We've set 15 podiums, nine fastest laps, eight pole positions. 
Uh, Red Bull have the three wins. Oscar has six wins to his name this season. Mick without a win yet, uh, but uh, has pushed Oscar close on a couple of occasions. Uh, three wins for Max, and it was George who got the other win. Uh, so, uh, no wins for Charles Leclerc this season so far either. Right, we will take care of the end of month bit and getting a new part going uh, on the next stream, which is tomorrow. We'll be back at the usual time of 8 p.m. in the UK. Uh, for those of you who uh, are relatively new to the channel, I do hope you stick around and uh, continue to uh, to watch as this season unfolds. Uh, and we will probably have another season after this as well. Beyond that, I don't know. Uh, depending on how, how well we win, we may possibly move teams at the end of this season, depending on how easily we win. Maybe we need to go to Mercedes and uh, resurrect them, because they are in a state this year. They were bad last year. They are even worse this year. Maybe. We, we shall see. Well, as, as we get towards the end of the season, we'll start to make a decision around the last couple of races, I think. But uh, yeah, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. I am Jim Bob, and I'll be back with more F1 Manager very soon.